So for anyone watching the interview, give me the elevator pitch. What the heck is Group of Seven? Group of Seven is an action-adventure comic book series that's set during the First World War that takes uh, seven very famous Canadians and puts them on a fictional mission to save the world. And then this is where Jason normally says, the world, but he doesn't see me do it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's our pitch. And honestly, we've said that so many times and at so many shows, and Jason has come in with the world <laughs> on so many times that it's... It's, it's been a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And and I think that, that pretty well sums it up. Um, now, I when I did my research on you guys, I, I thought it was really cool um, in my, my review that I did on YouTube. Um, I, I mentioned it, but I think you guys combined are uniquely qualified to make this book. Um, so, Chris, you're an, I'm going to hope I say this right, an archivist? Uh, archivist. Archivist. Yeah. Thank you. Archivist, yeah. Um, and you work primarily with uh, Canadian historical documents, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I work in I work in the heritage sector and yeah, here in Canada and Ontario. Yep. Perfect. Uh, and then Jason, from what I've read about you, uh, you were a teacher at uh, George Brown College for Communications. You've taught art at I was. Yeah. Uh, you've taught art yeah. um, as well as a, a course at the uh, AGO, is that correct? Actually, at the, at the ROM. The ROM. Thank Every, you. All my family always thinks I work at the AGO. Uh, and for years they would say, oh, we're coming to visit you at the AGO. And I would have to say, I don't actually work there. Yeah, I worked at the ROM for, for 19 years. And uh, I got to teach courses on all sorts of things as well as support others in their teaching of courses. And one of the courses I loved to teach there was a, a course that we called ROMic Books. when we got to look at how cultures throughout time have been combining words and text, sorry, words and images uh, to tell stories and how the comics we read today are very much connected to what uh, many cultures have been doing for, for thousands of years. And uh, we'd make cool books and uh, have a good time talking about superheroes. I mean, yeah, that kind of is the best part about it, right? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> There was one year where during the kids' break, during their recess, I don't know what happened, but I ended up going and sitting under a tree with them every day and reading Hush, like Batman Hush, yep. to the kids. <laughs> kids, like, kids, kids got to learn about Hush at some summer. point. We, well, it just came up. It happened very organically, but like spending a summer every day, like the kids couldn't wait for the next chapter of Hush, and we're <laughs> in the mystery of who he is, and it was a, a really uh, fun experience to do something like to, to share that childhood love of comics with uh, with really cool kids. So that was that was really fun. But that was our recess, you know. It was good. Good times. I mean, that's an awesome recess. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> I um, so too. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, with, with your combined experiences and your combined work between the understanding and appreciation of comics, your knowledge of history, Chris, um, yeah, I just found that you guys were in that sort of sweet spot. And Chris, specifically, you would have um, a lot of advantages when it comes to being more well-trained and un understanding of how to get the information that you got um, to show off the characters and to realize that, hey, these people were actually in the same war at the same time, roughly speaking, um, though, as I understand it, not actually all in the same room at the same time. <laughs> not that we know of, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd, like to, I'd like to think that, you know, that, that happened in some respect. But, uh, no, but in, in April 1917, where the story takes place, uh, they are all serving in Europe. They are all serving as soldiers in Europe, in the theater of war. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we just put them together in one spot and go from there. Awesome. I think that's great. And my, my first big question, because your guys' backgrounds, because of how – frankly Canadian the book is and also fun it is when you guys set out to make this um was it you know what we're going to make a, a comic book that can lead into teaching or inspire learning or was it just like I've got this cool story let's go for it and at what point because you guys right now do actively teach like people can call you and have you in and teach kids about comics at what point was it that you were going to start doing that like when did that come along it, it I, I, almost happens pretty organically very, very early on. Um, when, when Chris pitched the idea of the, of the comic, I was actively teaching. And I've always loved teaching you know, art and comics. 
So it was like, it was just a, a very natural extension. Like the same idea of, hey, we can put this comic book in stores. That the same distance between making and talking about retail is the same gap between, hey, let's make a comic and, hey, we can go into schools. Like that, that leap in, um, in time was, was very organic and, and, and kind of simultaneous. It was always a place that we thought we, the book could, could serve uh, the, the community in a kind of a fun way. Uh, that, that was a, an early on thought for sure. Awesome. Um, and I believe it was at an MCAF talk you, uh, you guys did. Jason, um, you mentioned that Chris demonstrated how to take feedback. Um, so how much of the comic were you guys making and then changing on the fly with that feedback either way from both of you? Um, and how much was it well, sort of pre-planned? Um, I wish we had a, a nice exact number for you or even <laughs> a fraction of some kind. Um, the, the feedback thing, I was, I was really, when I said it, I was, um, I was completely joking. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I was sort of saying it just as a, as a, a reminder to myself that, you know, the, of the value of, of being receptive to feedback and making sure that, that I'm following Chris's example, because as I said to you then, Chris, you, you've always done a really good job of making it seem like it doesn't hurt your feelings to receive questions from me and feedback from me that if I, if I thought something, you always entertained me, whether it was sincere or not, I've always thought it was sincere. You're an excellent actor in that respect. So I've, I've, I'm hoping that I can emulate that back to you. Um, cause you know, creators can be notoriously, uh, sensitive about what they're doing and, and also very, very territorial about what they're doing and hey man like this is my story i wrote that you can't change my i'm the writer you can't but you've never once sort of flexed that muscle or, or thrown that around and it's it's a really good thing because it uh it allows me to to try and and follow your um your example which is not my natural inclination to do i'm a little nastier than you i think by nature um that being said there have been some times where you know chris you've um You've let me know that you weren't sure what was happening in a page or weren't sure what was happening in a panel or where something was. And without saying, hey, Jason, you need to go change that, it's just clear to me that if I'm not clear in what I'm communicating through the the imagery and the sequences, then the story isn't working. And that that's a much more important thing to me than feeling like my first attempt at everything is perfect, which we all know it's not. Um, I want the story to be as clear as possible because... I love Chris's ideas and I want to represent them as clearly as I possibly can and heighten, enhance, uh, contribute, add to them any way that I can. And so if something isn't clear, like you've been good about telling me, I don't, I'm not sure what's happening here or can you bring that more to the forefront? A few times specifically, there have been characters because we've had seven characters on, on the team. Yeah. Um, the order in which you put people can get really repetitive and also can be kind of random sometimes. Like as I'm drawing, I might not think about, okay, who should be fourth in line here or who should be fifth in line? Like that idea of like, Oh, you have to keep doing these group shots. So there have been a few times where Chris, you would say to me, Hey, can you put uh, this character next to McRae or this character is about to have a moment. Can you put those two characters together uh, throughout the series without giving a spoiler? There's a, a growing relationship that you get between uh, Banting and Jackson, and, and that's based on historical evidence that the two of them were friends after the war. So putting those two characters side by side a couple of times, a little bit of eye contact here or there, or uh, you know, a helpful gesture from one to the other, it, it plants that seed. So Chris, is, you always did a good job reminding me, hey, like, put these guys together, or put that guy next to McRae, or put that guy ahead of McRae, or whatever it might be, if in the sketch it wasn't that way. Um, those were easy feedbacks to get, for sure, because there's good reason behind it. Is it Again, it's not a territorial thing, or uh, it's, about, it's about improving the narrative, and, and it's good. So the feedback has been awesome. Yeah, I think that uh, we, have the, we have the benefit of a couple of things in our favor in terms of working together in, in that space because, you know, we're we're starting this or we started this a little later in life in the sense where, uh, you know, we had some other experiences, professional, personal under our belts, certainly when it comes to communications and certainly when it comes to uh uh, having healthy communicative relationships, uh, whether with whether right. with people at work or partners or what it happens to be. Um, so, and 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 on top of that is, 
I, we we were kind of going we we did go into this with uh to go back to one of your earlier questions um it was it did straight up start off like a cool idea <laughs> we're like let's let's try Love this it. out but but it yeah. definitely you know it it we because we really didn't stake anything to it it was hey can we try this like it started off like here's an idea okay can you write a prologue yeah let me try that wrote a prologue hey can we draw, do some some character sketches hey we did some character sketches. like it, it just happened organically and because of that i think we also worked uh, into some respect as each other's editorial voice and so right. and i think and be, be, and i think we naturally fed into that because we were keen on the book we love the book so that came first and foremost and so that was never going to take the place of any potential writing or illustrative um demands that we had like you know we're friends first and foremost known each other for a super long time got super jazzed about this idea and so i think that really that was because that was the kind of um jet fuel that started it uh i think working together back and forth for the now, you know, five years or so, whatever it is, back and forth with ideas and content and creation. Um, I think we, we benefited from, from, from those pieces kind of being lined up before, before we said, well, here's a story, let's do it. Or here's the art, let's do it. It just kind of was an organic flow. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That feels like the way it should be, especially because yeah, you guys aren't hired by like DC or Marvel as of yet. Um, so you don't have an editor staff who's going to go, Hey, you know, Hey, Chris, this line doesn't make sense. Or Jason, this doesn't look right. So yeah, you guys need that feedback from each other. Um, now that actually does bring up one question that I, I've got um, for you, which is as someone who's never written comics and many of the people that watch this will probably have never written a comic or drawn a comic or produced one. How much did you learn from issue one to issue two? Um, both. Uh, I appreciate the actual creation of the book itself lends largely Jason to your talent where you're the actual one making each page uh, but Chris as well from a written perspective you have to see the scene and go wait that actually doesn't look right I have to rewrite that a little bit for Chris, or for Jason so how much was it from like issue one to issue two that you learned and then from also like issue one to issue six do you want to go first Chris you can go first it's okay <laughs> um for me, how much I learn has been uh, too much for me to for me to track, um, but it has completely changed the human being that I am today, without a doubt. Uh, when it comes to issue, even with an issue one, I one. So there, you know how many steps there are to creating a comic book, um, from the pure brainstorming and the actual script writing to laying out pages and then drawing them with different degrees of pencil and then inking and whatever and it comes after that, each step has yielded uh, many lessons through the, the years of this project. And each one has been really, really beneficial for that specific stage. And what you learn in one stage informs how well you can execute another stage. So, so how well I erase <laughs> my pencil after I've inked uh, influences how nice the scans are and how nicely it prints it. It prints. So when I do something well at one stage, or you know, choosing the, the the right kind of paper, and then using uh, a new pen, not letting, not working with old dull pens, it l allows my black line to be better, and it, it literally prints better when I have a nicer black line. So uh, you know, each thing you you see the result when you get it in your hand, and there's there's so much to learn. Like I said, with each step, it, it really it's like mind boggling. One thing specifically um, has been around time management and pushing myself to hold the deadlines. The, the first eight pages, the prologue that Chris spoke of before, um, we wanted to get that out in time for the centenary of Vimy Ridge. And I remember the, you know, the day before and the day, like it took me maybe seven months or eight months sometimes to draw a couple pages back then because you, you just don't know what, what results will come from it. You haven't seen it in print. I, I it was like walking through, you know, a maze with no lights. Like you just don't know what's going to yield results. So it was, uh, it was really challenging. But then, uh, you know, the day of, the day we're trying to put things together, I'm still inking and <laughs> blowing on paper to get it to dry so I can scan it, so I can send it to Chris, you know, to post. And, and um, so things got really rushed because when you don't know, when I don't know what to do, when I don't feel secure in what I'm doing, there's a lot of procrastination. 
So I'm going to say the first thing I probably learned is how to manage my procrastination, manage, uh, manage my, my obstacles and figure out, okay, what's the thing that's stopping me from drawing? Oh, I don't know what this gun looks like. So let's get a reference for the gun. Let's print it up. Let's put it next to the drawing board and let's look at it while I draw or whatever the case is. And establishing, like knowing, knowing myself well enough now to know which obstacles are stopping me from being productive. What's causing me to delay and to avoid working um, is really, really helped me execute and uh, actualize the, the 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 comic art side to get to the results that we want. So between issue one and two, that was really significant. Where it took me, like I said, seven months maybe to draw a couple pages for issue one. Some of it issue, issue was flowing much better. And there's a few pages in issue two. You can see I switch implements. I learn like, okay, why am I Pre like I for issue one and most of issue two, I was drawing with a brush that I had never practiced drawing with. Oh. I had 40, 40 years of experience using pencils and pens, but I, I thought I should be drawing with a brush because that's what comic book artists of a certain elk, a certain elk do. Like they, they work with brush. So I'm working with a cheap brush, bad idea. <laughs> uh, working with with gummy ink, bad idea, and my lines are all unsure and it, it yielded the results that you one that one would expect. And then for a couple pages that we wanted to do near the, the end of the creative process in issue two, I switched to a pen and, uh, all of a sudden my lines have some confidence. There's some more detail. Um, they're a little bit interesting in a different way. And I was like, okay, so for issue three, it's almost, almost all pen and brush pen. Uh, I go, you know, so you, you figure things out as you go to make, to, to reach the vision that you have, you figure out what what tools and what supplies you need that, that best reach it. But really using cheap materials is like uh, a super bad idea. Unless you're going for that look. Unless you're going for um, an underground or a, a real, you know, do-it-yourself kind of, yep. kind of comic book or graphic novel that's supposed to be like a diary of a guy you know, who made this while he was on the subway, then like, it, yeah, it should, it should have materials that look accordingly. But if you're um, trying to match, you know, legendary artists in some way, make it look aligned with, with great mainstream publications, you have to choose better materials and um, take care learning how to wash. Bro okay. No, no joke here. I was at fan expo last year. We were at fan expo and I went to, a dinner afterward with other creators and um, there was an, a guy who worked in animation who 20 years my senior and we were talking about buying brushes and buying, buying um, sable hair brushes and whatnot and I decided to get up the nerve to admit that I don't know what I'm doing with the brush and he asked me he's like do you know how to clean it properly and I said <clears throat> what sorry <laughs> He's like, no, really. Like, do you know how to properly clean your brushes? And I said, I have no idea. I'm just rinsing. He goes, no. You know, and he explained about using soap and getting in where the brush meets um, the the wooden part and the metal part that holds all the all the bristles in, and getting with soap. And he he showed me on his palm of his hand how gently I need to rub that area with warm water and how many minutes it should take. It's like this is this is why you go to art school. These <laughs> are the he, last. And, and he didn't learned, let go right? of that hand all night. <laughs> That man's hands were Too so soft. soft. It was a <laughs> well, he's constantly so, exfoliating. So, so. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So it's been really, you know, three, three and a half years of art school, really focused on comics. And every single page and every issue um, teaches me several lessons for, for each of the steps in the process. And it's painful and wonderful. And I love it. And I'm glad I'm not 19 because I don't know how good I'd be at, uh, at taking in um, new information where I'm embarrassed and now I, I'm, I'm so past embarrassment. Like I'm happy to say, I don't know what I'm doing with just about anything. And, and the, the Toronto comics and the, I should say the Southern Ontario comics community have been incredibly generous the creators, especially with, um, providing me with, uh, critical feedback, <laughs> constructive criticism, um, some fun insults and, and teasing and lots of good advice. So there's so much to learn. I, I love it. It's, it's been an awesome internship. Anyway, there's my short answer. <laughs> I love it. No, that's, that's perfect. I mean, that's good. Yeah. It, it's so, 
it helps us understand the process of exactly what you guys went through. Um, and sure. as a, a writer, sure. Chris, um, or sorry, yeah, as a writer, Chris, um, I appreciate, again, having not ever written a comic, my assumption is your job or your end of this comic ended at here, Jason, here's my script for six issues. Now, I feel like I'm terribly wrong. Um, so what did you learn from issue one to issue two, whether it's the research end of it, the writing end of it, or Jason saying, hey, hold on, this is kind of weird looking or whatever when I'm writing this or drawing it. Um, so yeah, what did you learn issue to issue? Well, I mean, I, I certainly didn't know how to write a comic either. Uh, when, uh, when this all started, I'm not sure I can still write a comic. I certainly... Um, I think no, but no, but in terms of, right but, I know, I know. If they thank you, those actually look beautiful. I appreciate that. That's <laughs> it's amazing. Um, no, I think the thing is, uh, I, I only, I only joke about that is because, like, even with formatting a script page, for example, uh, when I when I started taking a stab at at putting down scenes and dialogue, it was written like a like a like a script, like a like a play, like a. That's that. That was my knowledge center. I, you know, I'm not. I, I, I've never written any theatrical scripts before, but certainly I was familiar with them from high school and after high school and things like that. And so um, that's how I approached it by writing like you know scene and then description of scene and then you know dialogue and these things happen. And sometimes I forget actions and Jason would remind me. Well, some of the, it, it, which is really great because it's like these things have to happen for something else to happen, right? And so it just, but it was, it was more uh, an exercise over a year of like getting the structure down, getting the primary ideas, getting the, my, the beginning, the middle, the end, the arcs, all these pieces down to some degree that we could then work from that. And so between, I was actually this conversation the other day, someone was asking me about, about final product. And I was saying, I don't know, maybe 80% of the script, maybe 75% of the script remain the same from day one to day end but we would go back we, we i think the first four issues added at least a scene in each issue whether it was a flashback flashback sequence or added new characters or whatever it happened to be um in terms of the learning piece uh, i was actually saying to jason i remember a couple of months ago that so we're working on our next project right now and I was saying to him that now my head, when I'm writing, is in a different space. It's not, let's get these, let's get this dialogue and scenery down. It's like, how would it look on a page? How would we tell the story in a, in a, graphic, in a graphic medium through panels? And I, didn't, I never thought at all in that space when I wrote that initial script. It was just dialogue and scenes and action and, and a story. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I even had, you know, uh, it has elements in there that I, I think inherently from enjoying storytelling and enjoying, you know, that, that just that activity, um, it had elements in there that I didn't even know I was, I was, I was consciously putting in there. You know, Jason mentioned to me at one point, he's like, Oh, you, you're doing the hero's journey. And I'm like, what's the hero's journey. <laughs> and so if, if, if you're familiar with that and, and so, and, and then we start talking about all the great things that we love, whether it's going back to Jason's, you know, speaking about his days of the ROM and storytelling going back thousands of years to, you know, the, the films and, and things that we love today. Some of those key, kind of those key elements in a, in a heroic journey or heroic quest, uh, which I, I knew all about. I just didn't know there was a term for it, nor did I know that while writing an action right. adventure series, I was touch point touch points on them without like some like unconsciously doing it. Oh, well, this has to happen now. Well, this thing has to be introduced now. And it's really, it's a template. And, and, and because of that, that, so it's really, it was really interesting to, to be more aware of that and then use that awareness to move it forward. It's like, oh, oh well, now it follows, but at least have it as a guide and not that you're, you're alone in doing this thing. Um, which was which was super uh, comforting to learn, I would say. Um, and as and again, as as we we write and create more stories, you know, having those having having those lessons learned from that first period. I mean, so I know Jason mentioned so much about the art side learning and the production side. You know, from the writing side, absolutely, and then just the everything else side of putting a comic book out. Whether it was who, right. how do we print this? How do we print this thing? Um, which, right. which, which, which shows are actually worthwhile for us to go to after going to a couple, uh, where do we right. look at our online, online presence? How do we bring social media into it? Like it was, you know, all of it. 
And so it's been, I mean, I, I've been thankful and I'll always say thankful because I think we, we like to, we like to uh, think we're lifelong learners. It's, that's an idea that we both like to believe that we are, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, uh, that's one of our objectives. And so for this has been just a crash course in so many business elements too, um, of, of putting the, just putting this out there, like getting the, getting to your point, a trade, a graphic novel out now, like how did we get there? Sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how we got here, but it's, <laughs> it's been, it's been five, it's been five or six years of us plugging away at it and, and learning yeah. and being open, open to criticism, being open to ideas, not being afraid to connect. I mean, Jason mentioned the, the community where we are locally, Southwest is, is, is super, has been super supportive and is generally super collaborative and we've had we've we've had not only peers but people who we respect you know bought their books before we did this we had conversations with them and they've you know shared their wisdom shared their experience and i think being receptive to that uh, and again you know being where we are in our life and being super receptive to that has only served to help us i don't know again if we'd be 19 how receptive we'd be to it and it's a little different when uh, we're a little bit older so uh it's been super helpful in that regard. For sure. I mean, I, yeah, I think that's Chris, a fair point. Yeah. Just uh, you're t saying about the, the other creators or whatever, it just reminds me of a story where um, I came to Guelph for the first day of the, whatever they want to call it, the Dragon Con, the Guelph Comics Jam, yep. whatever event the Dragon put on in September. It was the, I guess we had the first two issues out, and I think I was there Saturday and you were there Sunday, if memory serves. We couldn't both be there at the same time. And um, the way the tables were set up, all the creators' backs were to each other on the inside of a rectangle. And I brought pages to work on because no one's going to really come talk to me and I don't have anything to draw. No one's commissioning me for anything. So I might as well just, I, I should be active. I should be drawing. And if any kids go by, they get to see what I'm doing and I get to show them what a page looks like. Right? That was sort of my, my, uh, my mindset. And it was taking me all day to even just get through like a few lines on a panel because I'm interrupted, I'm distracted, I'm, I'm scared to make new lines. And so one, um, one creator was on my case the whole time, a guy in, in a really good way. So Scott Chandler, is a, a great Canadian creator uh, from Stratford now, um, at one point he, he just like leans back and says, uh, hey, hey Jason, try this. And he hands me a brush pen that I had never seen before that uh, was out of my price point for tools at the time. And, he, and the guy just, he gave me his tool. Like he gave me uh, this expensive brush pen or what I thought was an expensive brush pen at the time. And he's like, like, go give it a whirl, see what it's like. And it was, it was like, okay, how, is that how this works? Like you get to actually, people are that nice that they're going to say, here's something from my, from my art kit or, you know, my pencil case that you, you can feel free to go and use this and give it a, give it a shot, see what you think. And uh, I was I was really taken aback by that the like the generosity and the, the um, just that 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 sharing of resources and in, in of, of intellectual resources like here's an idea you haven't tried this it looks like you're struggling give it give it a shot see what see what you think and uh, it was a it was a really nice way to to break the ice and and uh, make a new friend and also to make me feel like um, there wasn't as big a gap between. You know our position as as absolute beginners to his position of a, a firmly established, really incredible comics creator, cartoonist. Um, yeah, so it was it was one of those nice moments. But people in in the area have been incredibly kind and and welcoming to our presence, and like I said, always giving advice. And uh, I mean, even figuring out like what should the price point be on the book. You know, stores have given us feedback in that respect. Um, and you know, Chris and I had to figure out like how much should each comic be? Well, most indie comics are a certain price. People are making them themselves. Some people are charging 10 bucks for what we have. We love the idea of just the $5 bill, the easy, fast, you know, keeping it simple. And we looked at our price point of production and you, you learn all those little things as you go along, but everything has been a learning process. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun to do together. Um, like to have a, again, a, a partner in this who's open to, not having all the answers and and hearing things from their sources, I think both of us being married to to strong minded individuals uh, helps, and also having kids. Both of us have you know mm. a son and a daughter. It helps us. Like we're not so worried about where where dad is on this. We're we're fine, you know. So if we hear you know, like our egos are fine. We we yeah. we take enough abuse. <laughs> yeah. From, from, 
from kids that, that don't think you're that important uh, or whatever the case may be. So it's, it's been really easy to, to keep open-minded and not get ahead of ourselves with, uh, and staying humble. And it, it's, uh, it's a fun, kids really help you stay humble in a lot of ways. Right. So yeah, yeah it's right. good. Dad, hey dad, where's your hair? Like, you said, okay. All right. You know, <laughs> it's good. Anyway, I digress. Thank you.